My paycheck has been as high as $1,700 a week from playing for churches. And I wasn't at church five, six times a week. I didn't have a lot of responsibilities and I wasn't even really in that good with the church leaders. All I did was put the principle of you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate to work. And in this video, you'll learn how to get these results at your church job. The foundation, making the case. So what you want to do here is put the case together for the value that you offer. How it works is you present the overall picture of what you bring to the table. This includes things like how long you've been there, how you've met your responsibilities since you've been there, and even how long it's been since your last race, if you've had one at all. The hard part is making this value line up with the desires, needs, and wants that the church leaders have for the church. But based on my experience of doing this several times at churches I played for, along with the hours of research I put in to find out how successful musicians get raises, I've created a step-by-step -step process that's going to skyrocket your church pay. In fact, your next paycheck from church will be significantly higher if you do everything I'm about to show you. Step one, build a future idea. So not having some sort of idea or plan about some things that can improve the music ministry at the church or the church overall is going to undermine this whole process of you getting a raise, which makes this step the most important. What you want to do is start by making a list of some things that you see in your church's music department or the church overall that need to be improved. This could be things like professionalism and being more timely or having a more diverse music repertoire or having a better flow of service. It can really be anything, but usually the things that are going to have the biggest impact are your best bet. And on this list, you want to focus on the things that the church themselves actually care about and that they value. The big question to ask here is what are the things that can be changed or improved on that will bring the most value to the church? And thinking of these ideas can be a little challenging at first. So I have a trick I like to use, which is I like to listen for the things that the church leaders talk about in their meetings or even in sermons. I like to listen for what I call should be statements. Like when they say the church should be this or the church shouldn't be doing those kind of things. Those are very powerful indicators of what they value. They'll be like, the church should be worshiping God. Or if it's like the Joel Osteen kind of church, they'll be like, well, you know, y'all really need to be worshiping the Lord. <laughs> now, you can't just go ask for a raise from here and you'll see why in a second. Step two, turn dreams into reality. You still need to take this list of ideas that you have and mesh them down into a specific plan of action of how you're going to achieve them so you can present that when you ask for a raise. Because in order to get a significant raise, this plan or idea really needs to be well thought out and put together. And we'll talk about presenting the plan in the next step. But if you find it difficult to put a plan of action together for an idea that you have, it's probably because that idea sucks and you need to go with a different one. You want to have ideas and a plan that you can easily explain. And the trick here is you want to paint a picture of tangible results. Like this plan is going to help us double our offering or it's going to help us grow our music ministry by 25% or it's going to help us shorten our service by 20 minutes. That's a plan that has tangible results and you really want to be as specific as possible with this plan so that it can be thoroughly understood because this is how you're going to know that the plan or goal is met. Like if the plan is to grow the music department by 25% and you have 15 members in there, then you know at the end of that, the result should be that you should have roughly about 19 members. That's something that's specific versus saying something like get better because, you know, that's really subjective and people can disagree on what that even means. And fun fact, people tend to be really disagreeable when you start talking about money. Step three, present the plan. So remember when I said earlier that the idea is the most important part of this process? Well, this is where you get the church leaders to see the importance and the value of the idea and the plan that you have. 
And the trick here is that you have to have confidence and you have to believe in the plan and believe it'll work and believe that you are the one to make it work. Because once they see that, it's going to be really easy for them to buy into the plan and give you the raise that you're going to ask for in the next step. But we'll get to that in a second. But if you don't have that confidence, it's going to be really easy for them to write you off. And the way you present this plan to them is really easy. You're gonna do it in three parts. And a great way to think about this and remember it is thinking about writing a song. You start with the intro where you introduce the plan and say what the plan is. And then you go into the verses where you explain the details of the plan and how important it is and why it's valuable and why it'll work. And then you hit the chorus or the hook where you show them the results or the benefits of the plan. So for example, you can say that my idea or my plan is to grow the music department by 25% in the next six months. And one of the ways that I'm going to do that is I'm gonna have an open house for the congregation. And this is important because it's gonna inspire more congregational members to get involved and it will inspire the other ministries at the church to do the same thing. And this is gonna result in us having a better, stronger, larger music department that has more excitement and more interest and involvement. And and overall, this is going to help our Sunday services be more engaging. Mic drop, song over. Step four, make the ask. Now this is the fun part. It's where you show them that the value of this plan that you're about to put in place is 10 times more valuable than the raise you're about to ask for. And this is really easy as well. You're gonna use three simple concepts, time, money, and convenience. So you know how those deodorant commercials say stuff like, hey, this deodorant is going to help you stay fresh for 24 hours. Well, that's a time benefit. And a money benefit would be that this deodorant is going to help you save because you have to buy deodorant less often. And convenience would be that this deodorant is really easy to use. The top pops right off and when you're done, you can just pop the top on it and throw it to the side and you're done. Now, how this applies to how you're going to ask for a raise is you're going to say something like this is going to help people stay around longer and prevent them from leaving the music department. Time concept. It's going to really help the offering grow because people are going to be more involved and more excited and more interesting. Money concept. And this plan is gonna be really easy to implement because we're gonna do the open house on a Sunday after church, which is going to prevent people from having to come out an extra day of the week. Convenience concept. So what you're doing is, in the words of the Godfather, creating them an offer they can't refuse. Now, from here, what you're going to say is, because of the time, energy, resources, and effort I'm going to have to put into this plan, I'm asking for a raise of $300 a week. Now, wait, 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 wait. I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of money, or I barely make that much now, or my church doesn't have that kind of money. I get it. But I'm going to show you why asking for a high number like this is crucially important in the next step. But what's happening when you do this is an extremely powerful psychological concept, which is attaching value to a concept. Basically, now they know or at least have an idea of what something like your plan is worth. Step five, negotiate. Now, as you can imagine, getting a raise this size can be really hard in a lot of cases. And that's where this step comes in. What you do is when they push back on this figure that you've asked for is you say, hey, I really think this plan is going to be really good for our church It's going to help us grow in a lot of ways. And I really believe in it and I want to make it happen. And I don't really want money to be a factor in it. So tell me, what is a reasonable figure that you think as far as a raise that we could do to make this happen? Now, mind you, they still have this $300 figure or high figure in their head of what you asked for as far as a raise earlier. So they're going to feel really weird about offering you something like an extra 10, 15, 25 dollars or something like that. And they're very likely going to offer you something substantially higher. So let's say they say, well, we can do a raise of 75, maybe $100 a week. This is where the magic comes in, because now you can negotiate other perks. So you could say something like, 
how about I take this $100 raise that you're offering now, and then in a year from now, after the results of my plan are in place, I get another $100 raise. And then as this keeps improving, a year after that, I get another $100 raise. Now you're at the $300 that you asked for initially. Or you could even say something like, how about I take the $100 raise and in addition to that, I get one Sunday or one week off a month to focus and plan. You can negotiate whatever you want, vacation time, end of the year bonuses, whatever. You just want to make sure that what you get is comfortable enough and substantial enough for you to put this plan into action and make it happen. So that's the basic process of getting the raise that you want. But if you want more information of some things that you can do to grow at your church, you want to check out this video right here, right now.